All right, so we've looked at some derivatives of basic functions, power functions, sine, cosine, exponential function. Um, but of course, in practice, we usually don't see these functions in isolation. We often see them added together, you know, multiplied, combined in different ways. Um, so we need to develop rules for taking derivatives when we have more than one function combined in these ways. Um, here are the basic ones. We're going to look at some other rules later on. They're the topics of later sections. But here are three um, simple rules to get us started. Um, first is the constant rule, or maybe we should call this constant multiple rule. Um, right? Which says that if you take some function, some differentiable function, and you multiply by a constant, then the derivative of this new function is simply that same constant multiplied by the derivative of the old function. Um, another way of thinking about it is you, if you think about taking a derivative, if you have a constant inside the derivative, you can bring it outside, right? And then just take the derivative of the function that's left. Um, that's often a useful way to think about it in practice. Um, the sum rule says that the derivative of a sum is the sum of the derivatives. And similarly, the derivative of a difference, f minus g, is the difference of the derivatives. Um, we can think of the difference rule is, is usually just lumped together with the sum rule. They're really the same thing, right? Plus or minus. In fact, um, we can think of minus g as doing plus minus 1 times g. And then if you have the constant multiple rule, well, put k equal to minus 1, and you can get the difference rule from the sum rule. Okay. So really, it's the constant multiple rule and the sum rule. Those are the important ones here. Um, let's, uh, let's see why the constant multiple rule is, um, is true. And then in the next video, we'll look at the sum rule. So here's the proof of number one. OK? So as usual, h prime of x is the limit, h going to 0 of, uh, oh, I shouldn't have used h. Well, let's call this k. k going to 0. We don't like to have two different, h, h shouldn't mean two different things. Um, h of x plus, oh, but I have a k as well. Ha, ha, ha. OK. Um, that should be h. We better get a new name for our function. Uh, let's call it, uh, let's just make it a capital H. That should save the day. There we go. So H prime is going to be H at X plus H minus H at X over H. Okay. Okay, but this is just k times f at x plus h minus k times f at x over h. And that k is a common multiple. We can pull it out. Okay, leaves us with that. And we know from our limit properties that if you have a constant multiple inside the limit, you can bring it outside. And once you do, we can easily recognize that what's left over is simply the derivative of f. So we get k times f prime of x as expected.